1998, Microsoft announced its collaboration with Sega on Sega's new Dreamcast home video game system. According to the press release, Microsoft will provide an optimized version of the Microsoft Windows CE operating system and integrated DirectX services as the operating system for use with the Dreamcast. With the inclusion of Windows CE, Dreamcast will bring the benefits of an advanced Windows-based development environment in the world of console game development for the first time. Now, before we get ahead of ourselves, let's talk about what Windows CE actually is. Windows CE was Microsoft's operating system for embedded devices and minimal computers. Many believe that it's a cut down version of Windows, and I've even used this terminology in the past incorrectly. Windows CE is not a cut down version of Windows. While it looks very familiar to anyone who has used Windows, it runs an entirely different operating system and kernels than Windows did at the time. However, its name does imply and does make it a part of Microsoft's Windows family, which included Windows 95, Windows 98, and Windows NT at the time. Microsoft wanted their operating systems available everywhere, and with the emergence of smaller pocket devices and phones, they crafted a specific version of Windows that was bare bones, but still had a familiar look and feel and a familiar SDK to allow Windows programmers to port their applications to Windows CE devices with relative ease. And not only this, Microsoft were also very interested in entering the console market with their PC software sales expanding rapidly at this time. The only problem was, when it came to launch day of the Sega Dreamcast, Windows CE was notably absent, except for those words etched on the console when the system came out. Now, depending on where you are in the world, you might either have the words compatible with Windows CE or designed for Windows CE. Now, both of these phrases come with some implications. They suggest that you could take any Windows CE application and run it on the Dreamcast, as the hardware would be running the operating system when you powered on the device. But this is not accurate, and it's not really the fault of the end user. The messaging here was unclear. For the Dreamcast, Microsoft would indeed develop a Windows CE software development kit or SDK internally known as Dragon. At the time, it was using Visual C++ 6.0, and this predates Visual Studio by a few years. The Dreamcast Windows CE SDK installs on top of this, and if you open up any of the samples, you can see that there is very familiar Win32 code that runs here. But the point here is that Microsoft worked with Sega to develop the Windows CE SDK for the Dreamcast as an easy way to help Windows developers port their games from the PC to the Dreamcast. And the SDK's help guide has a comprehensive FAQ section that answers many questions specifically around why there is a need to actually use Windows CE for the Dreamcast itself. But somewhere between the press release in 1998 and the launch of the Dreamcast, something had changed. Microsoft was nowhere to be found. And the 18 launch titles that arrived for the Dreamcast, none of them would use the Windows CE operating system. Instead, all the games used Sega's own software, which would be known as Katana. As we would learn, the Dreamcast itself came with no operating system at all. Rather, it came with an IPL or initial program loader on board. This manages the boot up sequence and the simple interface to boot games, manage your VMU save files, adjust system settings, and so on. No operating system actually resides on the device until it's loaded in on disk with each game. And this is a significant difference between what was suggested in the 1998 press release. Windows CE Dreamcast titles did eventually appear, but if we go back to our SDK for a moment, rather than the operating system embedded inside the Dreamcast's ROM, it's bundled on every game that supported it. This one meg file here, called zerowinceos.bin, is pretty much named exactly what it's supposed to mean. It's the first file that gets booted up and loads up the Windows CE operating system dynamically, and then will load in the game data that it was compiled against. And as a bonus, any game that was built using the Windows CE SDK will have the Powered by Windows CE logo on its startup, and those that don't, will simply doesn't. In the end, there were around 80 titles that use Windows CE on the Dreamcast. Now this isn't insignificant, until you learn that there were over 600 Dreamcast titles developed, 
the majority would use Sega's internal Katana SDK. So what exactly happened here? While there's no definitive reason provided, we can conclude a few things. According to a CNET article, during the launch of the Dreamcast, developers were having trouble adapting to Windows CE. Rainbow Six was intended to be a launch title for the Dreamcast, but it was delayed. However, the company missed the date because of issues surrounding the use of Windows CE, according to a spokesperson. One factor in the delay was a lack of experience in targeting Windows CE-based software for use on a game console. Sega's then Vice President of Third Party Development said, In the lifetime of Dreamcast products, you'll see a lot more folks with PC experience building Windows CE titles. And he estimated around 30% of Sega titles will be Windows CE-based. In the end, that percentage was closer to around 13%. Other sources suggested that Microsoft was delayed in bringing Windows CE to the Dreamcast with its development taking over two years to complete and it simply wasn't ready in time for the Dreamcast launch. And I guess we also have to talk about the elephant in the room. Many also conclude that Microsoft took whatever they learnt with partnering from Sega and ultimately would use their own customized Windows kernel with DirectX for their own console, the Xbox, that launched in 2001 with many considering the original Xbox to be the spiritual successor to the Dreamcast for this and other reasons. Windows CE sometimes gets a bad rap for holding back games that ran on the Dreamcast, the most famous being Sega Rally 2. Its Dreamcast port is very good, but the CE operating system gets blamed for its frame rate drops, albeit unfairly. The game runs at 60 frames per second, but frequently drops to 30 because of its double buffered V-Sync approach and it can be quite jarring. And I personally don't think that Windows CE was actually holding back Sega Rally 2 or any game that was developed with Windows CE SDK. It's very well optimized and Microsoft and their DirectX technology was very well optimized for video games. And it was something that we said was brought to the original Xbox and they're still using to this day on the Xbox series line of consoles. Outside of additional memory that was required when the Windows CE operating system was loaded at boot up, I don't believe that Sega Rally 2 could have really been optimized any further at the time. Another notable high profile game that used the Windows CE SDK was Resident Evil 2. The Dreamcast port is considered one of the better ones. It was ported over from the PC version, runs at a native 640x480, supports VGA output, the FMVs run full screen at 30 FPS, textures are not filtered. There is also the inclusion of hard mode, but there are some nitpicks here. There's missing audio and the reddish filter on most of the backgrounds indicate a texture color conversion, or perhaps it was the closest the developers could come to matching the original's color palette. I should note that none of these issues are related to Windows CE itself. The development team would have used the SDK to quickly port the game from the PC codebase. Ultimately, Sega's choosing to go down a different route than what was originally planned by bundling an operating system with the disk itself rather than on the console is probably what saved the Dreamcast and kept it alive all these years later. Now what I mean by that is, of course we know that the Dreamcast lifespan was short-lived, but its thriving community that's continuing to build games to this very day uses an open source alternative known as Callistos. It's a very advanced SDK in its feature set and up-to-date and even supports modern C++ standards and very optimized 3D graphics APIs including OpenGL. Consider if Windows CE was baked into the hardware. Things would be very different today and there may not be the community of developers that are still working on the hardware in the same fashion. It would have suffered from a similar fate to the original Xbox in that binaries were technically illegal to distribute. So I guess it was the right move. And I do hope that this deep dive does help clear up some confusion and misconceptions about Windows CE on the Dreamcast. And if you like this episode and you want to see more similar deep dives in certain topics in the history of video games, please let me know in the comments below. But for now, guys, we're going to leave it here. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked it, don't forget to leave me a thumbs up and I'll catch you guys in the next episode. Bye for now.